planning. Planning is perhaps the most important aspect to finding success with our compositions. Unfortunately, planning is the step that most people skip completely. Take, for example, you're going on a road trip to a place you've never been before. You wouldn't just pack your bags, hop in the car, and take off. You most likely would do some form of planning. You might look at a map or you might enter the address in your navigation center system. Either way, you're doing some sort of planning. We need to approach our drawings and paintings in the same way. We need to have some idea of where we're going with the artworks that we create before we start creating them. Most times, we create small sketches ahead of time. These small sketches are usually referred to as thumbnails. Now, thumbnails are loose and quick. They're not meant to be finished pieces of artwork. They're just meant to help you figure out all the compositional puzzles before you actually go to your artwork. That way, when you're in your artwork and you're creating your drawing or painting, you've already decided on all of the design elements. Of course, you can change your mind along the way, but at least you have a really good idea of what you're trying to accomplish with the artwork that you create. And when we approach thumbnail sketching, we should do so with uh, an attitude of experimentation. We should be open to any ideas that might enter our brains and quickly sketch them down. A lot of times we often think that our first idea is the best, but oftentimes if we allow our mind to think creatively and we're open to experimentation and different possibilities, we may find that best idea on our fifth or sixth or even tenth attempt at creating a thumbnail sketch. So the next time you create a piece of artwork, make sure you do some planning. Sketch out your composition before you start into it. And more than likely, you'll create a stronger composition than you would have without any planning at all. The rule of thirds is another compositional strategy that we can take with our artworks. Now, the rule of thirds is based on a mathematical theory called the golden mean or the golden principle. The golden mean and golden principle is rather complex, so most artists and photographers simply refer to the rule of thirds when they're laying out specific subjects within a scene. The way the rule of thirds works is basically we take our picture plane and divide it into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. We have intersection points that happen along these thirds. These intersecting points are great places to put focal points. They often lead to a more aesthetically successful composition. We can also even place subjects directly on these lines of thirds. You'll see this used lots of times in different movies and films and even photographs. In fact, if you take a look at the video you're watching right now, you'll notice that I'm laid out in one of the thirds within the picture plane. Let's take a look at this work. Notice how the artist has positioned the figure, which is the focal point, almost directly on one of these points. Now, the compositions we create can be either static or dynamic. Static compositions are fairly straightforward and direct. Static compositions make sense for images like illustrations. For example, a scientific illustration where the intent is to basically show the viewer some information. In most cases, however, we want to create more dynamic compositions since those tend to be more interesting. There are several ways that we can create more dynamic compositions, but one way that's used by artists over and over again is by including diagonals in the artwork. In this work by Frederick Remington, we can see the repeating diagonals throughout the artwork. Notice how it makes the artwork more engaging and more interesting, and more importantly, more dynamic. So look for interesting ways to incorporate diagonals in your composition. For example, instead of showing a subject from a straight on view, maybe you consider showing that same subject from a bird's eye view or perhaps a worm's eye view. This will create more interesting angles and give you the opportunity to include more diagonals in your compositions. Now, when we compose our artworks, we should also consider the number of elements or subjects that we include. The human mind finds balance in odd numbers, more specifically the number three. This means that including three objects is the optimal number of objects to include to find balance and create a more successful composition. This doesn't mean that you have to use three objects by any means. You're welcome to use more or less. It just means that if you're using more than three, it's better to use five than four, and it's better to use seven than six. For whatever reason, if we have two objects within the scene, it tends to make a sort of competition between the two objects, and it's hard for our minds to determine which one of the two objects is the focal point. For example, if we look at this image that features two spheres, it's hard to determine which one of the two spheres is the most important and therefore demands our attention. 
However, when we add a third, the other two subjects act to frame the third, resulting in a more balanced composition. So what have we learned here? We've learned that composition is not about guesswork. It certainly has nothing to do with luck, and it's definitely not about talent. Composition is about understanding how your viewers will interact with what you create. It's the result of careful planning, and it also sometimes involves some experimentation. Now, we've covered a lot here, and it can be a bit overwhelming, but the more that you practice these concepts and incorporate them into your own compositions, the more they'll become intuitive to you, and your compositions will improve over time.